Hello, I'm Andrew Rainey and welcome to Crowdfund This, where I'll be looking at some of the best video gaming crowdfunding projects currently looking for pledges, including the beautiful hand-drawn It's Cookie, humorous pixel art sci-fi action adventure Orbital Cargo Division, QRPG Fur Quest, relaxing exploration game A Glider Story, and last but not least, the dark hand-drawn 2D hack and slash platformer Wikufu. It's a new year and I've got a new channel name as I reboot, reload and remaster kickstart this into crowdfund this. After a month away from making videos I wanted to give a new name as I expand the channel and look at other platforms. And do you know who else is back on YouTube? Captain Marvel herself Brie Larson is back and guess who I have as my special guest? I'm just kidding. Before I jump into the games on this episode, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that has subscribed so far. I love being able to share these awesome crowdfunding projects with you and help bring the developers a little bit more exposure. So please hit the subscribe button and also like and share the video so hopefully more people can see it. Now after a bit of a lull over the Christmas period, there are countless games looking for your coin as indie game developers try and raise funds for their passion projects. So I'm going to try and squeeze in as many as I can. As always, I'll be looking at the games in order of how long they have left, starting with the shortest. So let's jump in. It's Cookie is a bit of an oddity. It's like an animated spot the difference picture, but here you need to find the silly ones, which are the things that don't quite belong. Uh, the doodle art style is fun and creative, while the earlier levels seem easy, the challenge does pick up. I'm not sure if it will have massive replay value, but it looks like it will be fun while it lasts, as you complete the challenges to unlock all 9 doodle maps. Now the standout feature is obviously the look of the game, with the black ink on the paper texture background. Great news for people like me who love a dark mode, you can invert the colour scheme on this game. New Zealand developer Roshan Naushad describes this game as his passion project. He's been pouring time and effort into it when he can, and he's been developing it primarily for kids, and you could definitely see this as something for a way for kids and parents to bond. By engaging their imaginations, Roshan sees the game as a useful tool for speech development and speech therapy. For those just looking for a copy of the game, you'll be looking at a pledge of five New Zealand dollars, which works out around about three pounds. You can also double this to get two digital copies of the game for you and a friend. Now, if you enjoy Roshan's art style in the game, pledge 20 New Zealand dollars to get two digital doodle maps from the game at print resolution, so you can get them printed and framed. If you want to help the developers get to their goal and you have money to burn, a pledge of 100 New Zealand dollars gets you a ton of stuff. Five copies of the game to share, two high res doodle maps, two character gifts, an exclusive digital poster, plus the chance to talk shop with the developers on Discord. Orbital Cargo Division is a humorous pixel art sci-fi adventure game from Mac and PC. The story revolves around the crew of a freighter arriving at a seemingly abandoned space station, but the rest of the story is being kept tightly under wraps. However, developer Manuel Schneck has promised that it will be an exciting and entertaining space adventure. The game will be fully voiced in German and English, and from the little I've seen, it has some subtle nods to classic sci-fi fare like Aliens and Star Trek. This is not Manuel's first rodeo in the world of crowdfunding. In the past, he has successfully crowdfunded the Magic Cauldron series. More importantly, he delivered those games on time and had some nice rewards for his backers, and he hopes to do the same with Orbital Cargo Division. It's a game he has wanted to make for 15 years, so it would be amazing if we could help him achieve that goal. Now for a digital copy of the game, you're looking at a pledge of 20 euros. However, for an extra 5 euros, you can get the early bird discount on a tier that gives you the game, soundtrack and digital art book. It is limited to 50 backers though, so get in there quick. If you're looking for physical rewards, you should check out the 100 euro classic box tier. If you watch the video, you will see the lovely boxes Manuel had made for the Magic Cauldron crowdfunder, so expect something of a similar quality here. It comes with all the digital goodies on a stylish USB stick, and also means you get your name in the credits. There is also an exclusive box version, but you'll need to pledge 300 euros in order to get that one. Now, if you've ever wanted to be credited as co-producer on a video game, well now is your chance. For a pledge of 250 euros, you will see your name credited at the start of the game, as well as getting all the other rewards as well. 
Fur Quest is a top-down RPG which I like to think of as Earthbound but with animals. The video for this project looks fun in a bonkers kind of way and I am here for it. The game promises a host of cute and wholesome characters to meet and explore the world with as you play the game, fight monsters and most importantly help people and make new friends. Friendship is actually a core mechanic of the game and who you decide to make friends with will impact the story offering drastically different endings. Kickstarter has been awash with top-down RPGs over the last year, but FurQuest just oozes style with the four main characters walking across the screen like the Beatles at Abbey Road. I also really like the main idea of the game, which is that every person, a main, has the opposite version of themselves, an invert. The story revolves around how these two types are separated and should lead to a lot of interesting characterization and story twists. The other thing that I love in this game is the combat system. I just finished playing Paper Mario the Origami King and one of the worst things was the repetitive combat system. In Fur Quest, every enemy has their own bite-sized combat minigame, a little bit like WarioWare, which I also love. However, when you meet a boss, those mini games become larger and more challenging. Now, if you love SNES style RPGs with a great sense of humour, interesting game mechanics and hundreds of collectibles to find, then FurQuest is definitely one for you. It's bold and brightly coloured and just has a really nice vibe about it. Even better, there is a free demo so you can try it right now, as well as listen to the full soundtrack created by the game's developer, Bitter. For a digital copy of FurQuest, you're looking at a pledge of $15 or more. For the merch hunters among you, the $45 tier dubbed After Party Sleepover is made for you. You get the game, your name in the end credits, a copy of the soundtrack, some digital wallpapers plus behind the scene notes, maps and art. You even get to write a line of text for the game, but no sweary words though. The top tier of $1000 is called See You Next Year and gives you all the goodies from the After Party Sleepover tier, plus you get to design your own sprite, your own mini game, your own monster and your own custom quest. Not to be confused with the less than stellar A Glider's Journey, A Glider's Story is a small indie game where you control a hand glider who flies around a mysterious island. It's a little bit like a low polygon version of Breath of the Wild mixed with Windbound and comes from the small three-man team at Wax Studios. The footage gives off a nice relaxed vibe in a similar vein to one of my favourite games from last year, A Short Hike. The low poly graphics suit the style of gameplay because it's less about the graphics and more about the experience. Now the three man team at Wax Studios is only seeking £400 so I was a wee bit wary of recommending it but they have a demo of the current build up at itch plus you can see a developer blog on YouTube and the game has come on leaps and bounds since the first preview back in August. So if you want to support a game studio in its infancy, now is your chance. For a copy of the game a week before the release, plus 10,000 in-game coins, you need to pledge £10 or more. For an extra fiver, you get double that. Sadly, there is not a lot of reward tiers here, so there's no merch to be had, but if you want to get your name included in the game, you're looking at a pledge of £42 or more. The top tier is a very reasonable £69, gets you everything from the other tiers, plus your name inscribed in a memorial rock found on the island within the game. Lastly, we have Wukufu, and it is a dark hand-drawn 2D hack and slash platformer from solo developer Sticker B, aka Esteban Campos, based in Chile. The reason I mention this is that the game revolves around a warrior from the Mapuche, the indigenous inhabitants of southern Chile in Argentina. The game is in fact inspired by the story of the Kalfaman, a female warrior that once appeared in an ancient confrontation right when the Mapuche warriors were about to give their last breath and help them achieve victory. In Wukufu, players take on the role of Sakinko, a young warrior set on a quest to avenge her father's death and protect her people from the evil spirits that now menace her land, the evil spirits known as the Wukufu. I cannot get over how gorgeous this game looks. Every frame has been painstakingly hand-drawn, while the cutscenes are sublime and cinematic. All the environments are hand-painted too, and the darker colour palette really gives a sense of fear and menace while exploring. It's not a simple hack and slash to the finish either, taking some metroidvania elements such as character building, weapon and skill upgrades, plus map exploration, using new skills to unlock new areas. As far as I'm aware, this is the first game to explore the history of the Mapuche people, so you'll get to learn all about the Mapuche and help spread the word about how this fierce culture has been protecting nature in South America for centuries. 
To help enhance his sound design, Esteban has brought in Santiago Yara to do the musical score, and you will definitely want to experience the dark, visceral sounds that transport you to the corrupted nature of Wikufu. It is also coming to consoles with a launch on Xbox confirmed and PS5 and Switch coming if the stretch goals are met, which I really hope they are as this game would be great on both platforms. If you want a digital copy of the game on PC or Mac, then you'll need to pledge £10 or more. This also gets you your name in the credits, which is a nice extra at this level. If you want to play the game on console, then you'll need to double your pledge to £20. This also comes with a copy of the game's haunting soundtrack as well. Now, to get your hands on all of the digital rewards on offer, including digital wallpaper, soundtrack, art boot, and beta access, you'll need to pledge £45 or more. The top tier is a reasonable £80 and comes with all the digital goodies plus an exclusive mouse pad. I'm not sure a worth mouse pad is actually worth £35, but if it helps the developers get more money, I'm all for it. This is also limited to 15 people, so you best grab it while you can. Now that's all from me. As always, I'll be keeping an eye on the progress of all of the projects that I've shown and by helping them out by spreading the word on Twitter at Andrew Rainey and at crowdfund underscore this. So please come and follow me, share the video links and spread the word even further. If you can help out these developers, then please click on the project link in the comments to give them a pledge. If you cannot afford to donate, I'm sure they would appreciate it if you share the link to their Kickstarter page across all of your social media channels. Remember, if you love crowdfunding and video games as much as I do and want to hear about exciting new campaigns, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to keep up with the latest video gaming news and previews, as well as read exciting interviews with game developers, then please check out my good friends over at warpzoned.com. Until next time.